racism being at the at the root of it. Uh, but first and foremost, what do you make of how everything has panned out? I mean, last week, Justin Jones was out of a job, quote unquote, in representing the people. Yesterday, he's back on the job. And, and, and people are still trying to figure out what's going to happen with Justin Pearson. But, but what does this say? Justin Jones said this is an attack on democracy. How do you see it, Brother Michael? Well, this is this is racism, pure and simple. And this falls in line with the history of Tennessee and the um, history of the fall of Reconstruction and the Jim Crow era after Reconstruction ends in 1877, when uh, these former Confederate states rewrote their state constitutions to impose poll taxes and literacy tests to suppress the African-American vote because we were voting in high percentages and then a lot of these southern states like mississippi uh we made up as well as south carolina we made up the majority of the population and in many cases the majority of voters so you have um a fear among these white republicans especially white male republicans that their numbers are declining popul population wise in in the u.s and you have an increasing number of non-white people uh who are making up the population and as well as the voters an increasing number okay so this was a total move uh they they said it was because of uh house decorum they broke house decorum when they um spoke out of turn on the on the house of representative on the state assembly floor for about 15 seconds their mics were cut off then they used the bullhorn they're trying to draw attention to the mass shooting that took place at the uh, Christian school just the week before. Six people were killed, including three nine year olds. OK, now uh, the, Republicans in the state assembly, they have a super majority. OK, uh, it's over. Uh, it's at least two thirds Republican. So no bill can uh, get passed without Republicans voting for it. There's only about twenty five. Uh, Democrats in the state assembly out of, uh, of out of about a hundred. Okay, so th they specifically did this to humiliate these brothers and to send a clear message that you're too uppity. They were trying to put them back in their place. These same white men, 60, 70, 80 years ago, would have been involved in the physical lynching of these two African American men. So they couldn't do a physical lynching. So they did a high tech political lynching of them. But this is backfiring. Uh, on these Republicans because because it's shining a spotlight on their on, on their racism. All right, folks, welcome back to the culture here on the Black Star Network. I'm your host, Faraji Muhammad. Uh, we have been keeping you posted about what has been going on down in Tennessee since last week, since the expulsion of those two black uh, Democratic uh, lawmakers from the Tennessee House of, uh, of Representatives. Now we know that they not only were expelled, but it was a national conversation, national story, all because they wanted to get involved in a peaceful protest for gun control and gun uh, and gun reform. That's where it stemmed from, folks. Well, sort of, kind of. It really stemmed from racism of for, uh, of for these two black lawmakers, Justin Pearson out of Nashville, Representative Justin Pearson, and former Representative Justin. I mean, sorry, former representative, uh, Justin Jones, excuse me, out of Nashville, former representative, uh, Justin Pearson of Memphis. Uh, but now, last week, as we reported, uh, yesterday, I'm sorry, we reported that it would be up to the Nashville Metro Council to determine whether Justin Jones uh, can uh, get back into the seat. Well, after yesterday's meeting, they decided, yes, we are going to send Justin Jones back to the state house of representatives i want to show some footage uh, of what happened in that meeting yesterday take a look he was a bold and unapologetic advocate for the community the people chose their representative and with this vote we will send a strong message to our state government and across the country that we will not tolerate threats to our democracy.
Justin Jones has been elected as the interim for the Bengals. And as you can see, that was just a little bit of what happened last night as Justin Jones returned to the House floors to cheers. His fellow Democrat representative, Antonio Parkinson, introduced him to the session as, quote, our newest member. <laughs> the crowd gathered at the meeting, erupted into cheers after the vote, uh, and those marching with Justin Jones, Representative Jones chanted, whose house? Our house. Now, uh, I want to put this quote up there, Keenan, of what Mr. Jones had to say from the steps of the Capitol after walking the floor blocks from City Hall. He told the crowd, quote, today we are sending a resounding message that democracy will not be killed in the comfort of silence. Today, we sent a clear message to Speaker Cameron Sexton that the people will not allow his crimes against democracy to happen without challenge. Now. The state law allows local legislative bodies, folks, to appoint interim House members to fill the seats of expelled lawmakers until an election is held. The 36 to zero vote to return Justin Jones to his seat followed a vote to suspend a procedural rule that prevents an individual from being nominated and appointed to the seat in the same meeting. Uh, so there has been a victory in that regard with Representative Justin Jones returning to the state house. The, the next step will be how the Shelby County commissioners will handle the, uh, the case of former Representative Justin Pearson. This is the young brother who we've seen on RMU, um, an articulate, very, very powerful young brother who, is, who his still is, has not, um, has, uh, uh, his still has not been put back into the house just yet, but we will see how Shelby County in Memphis handles the situation. I wanna bring my brother, Brother Michael and Hotep into the conversation of the AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, African History uh, Network podcast, to give us his take on what we've been seeing down in Tennessee. Brother Michael, good to talk to you, brother. How are you today? Hey, I'm doing all right today, Faraji. How you doing? I'm good, I'm good. So this situation here turned into a whole other thing, mm -hmm. uh, racism being at the, at the root of it. Uh, but first and foremost, what do you make of how everything has panned out? I mean, last week, Justin Jones was out of a job, quote unquote, in representing the people. Yesterday, he's back on the job and, and, and people are still trying to figure out what's going to happen with Justin Pearson. But, but what does this say? Justin Jones said this is an attack on democracy. How do you see it, Brother Michael? Well, this is this is racism, pure and simple. And this falls in line with the history of Tennessee and the um, history of the fall of Reconstruction and the Jim Crow era after Reconstruction ends in 1877, when uh, these former Confederate states rewrote their state constitutions to impose poll taxes and literacy tests to suppress the African-American vote because we were voting in high percentages. And then a lot of these Southern states like Mississippi, uh, we made up as well as South Carolina, we made up the majority of the population. And in many cases, the majority of voters. So you have um, a fear among these white Republicans, especially white male Republicans, that their numbers are declining popula population wise in, in the US. And you have an increasing number of non-white people uh, who are making up the population and as well as the voters, an increasing number. OK, so this was a total move. Uh, they, they said it was because of uh, House decorum. They broke House decorum when they um, spoke out of turn on the on the House of Representatives uh, on the state assembly floor for about 15 seconds. Their mics were cut off. Then they used the bullhorn. They're trying to draw attention to the mass shooting that took place at the uh, Christian school just the week before. Six people were killed, including three nine year olds. OK, now uh, the, Republicans in the state assembly, they have a super majority. OK, uh, it's over. Uh, it's at least two thirds Republican. So no bill can uh, get passed without Republicans voting for it. 
there's only about 25 uh, Democrats in the state assembly out of, uh, of out of about 100. OK, so th they specifically did this to humiliate these brothers and to send a clear message that you're too uppity. They were trying to put them back in their place. These same white men, 60, 70, 80 years ago, would have been involved in the physical lynching of these two African-American men. So they couldn't do a physical lynching. So they did a high tech political lynching of them. But this is backfiring. Uh, on these Republicans because, because it's shining a spotlight on their on, on their racism. And then uh, Gloria Johnson, the representative who was not voted out, she was saved by one vote. OK, it because uh, uh, they wanted to vote her out as well. So uh, when, when we studied the history of Tennessee, brother, and uh, the Ku Klux Klan was founded December 24th, 1865 on Christmas Eve in Pulaski, Tennessee. And I can give you more history on Tennessee. Um, this falls right in line with it. I'm not surprised by this at all. Mm -mm. Mm. I'm not surprised either. Because when this whole situation went down last week, Brother Michael, I was just like, this is Tennessee, folks. This is not like the bastion of liberalism. This is not like, a, you know, the most progressive state in the country. So this is Tennessee. This is going to happen. I think people um, are, have put this into a position of, you know, a democracy is being attacked. But they're operating from a different set of rules down there. I, I remember reading when when uh, uh, Representative Faison, who serves as the chair of the of the House Committee uh, in charge of this whole uh, of, that was in charge or responsible for this expulsion, when he was asked on CNN about going to the Ethics Committee, guess what? He was like, "No, we didn't feel like we needed to go to the ethics committee. We can make our decision on the, on, on our own." I went to the to my my colleagues, and we decided to make this unilateral decision on my own. So they're not playing by the same rules, brother Michael. Well, the Republicans are playing for keeps. Republicans don't care about democracy. Republicans are, pay, are playing for control. Politics is the legal distribution of scarce wealth, power, and resources, and the writing of laws, statutes, ordinances, amendments, and treaties, their adoption, interpretation, and enforcement. Republicans don't care about the rules. They make them up as they go along. Okay. Um, so and, and they're and they're fighting to maintain power. This is what we have to understand. This is why I've said on this show before, and I said on Roland's show, Roland Martin's show, and I've said on the African History Network show, we have to stop telling, the people mean well when they say this, but we have to stop telling African-Americans to exercise your right to vote. You don't vote for exercise. If you want to exercise, you go to the gym and work out. You vote for power, C -c plain and simple. You vote mm. for power. You vote mm. for policies that are beneficial to you, your family, your community, your people. And what's good for African-Americans is good for America in general. When we change what the goal is, the goal is not to fight the good fight. The goal is not to, to exercise your right to vote. You don't vote for Dr. King and Fannie Lou Hamer. Yes, we need to study. Witness. Yes, we need to honor and respect them. Yes, we need to study the history of them. But you vote for power and control. When we change what the goal is, then the the movements then the strategies that we put in place to bring about the goal to bring mm. it into fruition will change but as long as we keep our people thinking that you go vote for exercise and you go for some vote for symbolism things like this they can just write in anybody's name they can vote for mickey mouse or donald duck and then you can let people get into office who are working to dismantle the legacy of john lewis and dr king and fannie lou hamer and hosea williams etc so we have to be smarter in how we message this also Oh, that's a great point. Excellent point, brother. Excellent. We don't vote to exercise. We vote for power. We vote Man, for power, plain and simple. Everybody and, else understands this. Republicans right. voted. Republicans held their nose and voted for Donald Trump in 2016. For many Republicans, he was not their first, second, third, fourth or fifth uh, choice. But they said I watched I watched uh, about 100 speeches and interviews that Trump did during 2016. I, I reported on this for 9, 10 a.m. Superstation WFDF here in Detroit that the radio station, the African History Network is on. I saw numerous focus groups with uh, Republicans and uh, many of them became Trump supporters. They said this is about the Supreme Court. They said this is about the federal judges. This is why they voted for Trump. They saw Trump as a means to an end. They used him as a tool to accomplish what they want. They got three conservative Supreme Court justices. They got 226 federal judges, which are lifetime appointments. They got Roe versus Wade overturned. This is what they were aiming for. They saw him as a means to an end. 
we need to understand how to use uh, politicians as a means to an end, as a tool to accomplish what it is that we want. But to understand what it is that you want, you have to understand history, law, politics, and economics. There it is. Look, we got to take a quick pause. When we come forward, more conversation with my brother, brother Michael and Hotep. And I want to get your thoughts on this, folks. Because the politics part of this process is how do we preserve the right for peaceful protest? How do we make sure that this doesn't happen in some other city, some other state? Let's have that conversation. Stay with us. You tune into the culture here on the Black Star Network. All right, folks, welcome back to the show. We've been talking to my brother, Michael Inhotep of the African History Network uh, show and who is a researcher and scholar. As we've been having a conversation about the latest development in this case in Tennessee, where Justin Jones, Representative Justin Jones was reappointed to his seat last night by the Nashville Metro Council. Now folks are waiting to hear back from the Shelby County commissioners uh, for the reappointment of former representative Justin Pearson uh, out of uh, Memphis, Tennessee. And all of this comes as a result of their involvement in a gun control, gun reform protest that happened at the state capitol uh, a few days ago uh, in last week. Now, the question becomes, and I want to bring my brother Mal- uh, Michael back into this because you dropped the jewel. We're not voting just to exercise or just a, as a feudal It's not just something that we just do. We're voting for power. But now when we're looking at the situation that that this is also an infringement on this idea of a rightful, peaceful protest. I remember reading and this is what Mr. I think it was Mr. Sexton. You probably came across the same thing, Brother Michael. Mm -hmm. He said that the march that was comprised of about a thousand people on the grounds of the state house, he said that the march was similar to what they saw on January the 6th. Yeah, he said he compared it to, he and others compared it to the January 6th, 2021 insurrection. Well, if you watch, if you get most of your news from Fox News, that's what the, that's what Cool Plotter TV is lying and telling these people. No, it was not. The, 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 the uh, 1,000 people who were protesting for gun, for, for common sense gun laws after six people were shot and killed in Nashville, Nashville and, and, and the state of Tennessee has some of the most lax gun laws in the country. Uh, that was a peaceful protest. So you have this you have this false equivalency, false equivalency. They tried to compare the January 6, 2021 insurrection to black Black Lives Matter protests, even uh, even protests where they there may have been um uh, cars burned or, you know, uh, uh, property damage, things like this. They leave out the fact that these domestic terrorists that Donald Trump sent to the U.S. Capitol building beat up 140 police officers. Somehow they forget that. Right, right, okay? right. So, somehow they forget that they were they, that they were breaking out windows. They were defecating in the uh, U.S. Capitol. They were stealing property. They built a gallow with a hangman's noose. You had some of these domestic terrorists yelling, hang Mike Pence, hang Mike Pence, threatening to execute the vice president of the United States. Somehow they have am- selective amnesia and they don't mention any of that. OK, but they just try to compare with uh, the protest that took place in Nashville, which was a peaceful protest. They try to compare that to the January 6, 2021 insurrection to then justify trying to expel these two brothers. But the chickens are coming home to roost and these white Republicans have opened up a can of political whoop ass that they can't put the lid back on. This is going to blow up in their face. And this is energizing the youth in uh, in Tennessee, but also across the country, because they're seeing how these people in elected office are ignoring your concerns and spitting in your face. And then they're trying to expel the very people that you voted to sit to send there to represent you. Okay, so this is blowing up in their face. So 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 that so how do we get to the place where now the 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 level of retribution isn't against the idea or or isn't against the right for peaceful protest because that's the thing that that folks are concerned about at this point Mm -hmm. that you know okay nashville did what it did memphis folks are waiting there may be a high level of retribution where these two cities may not get the project certain projects done they may not get certain funding from the state to do things but more importantly if citizens feel like they can't voice their concern, they can't protest peacefully, 
Right. Then, 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 and, and they feel like there's going to be some sort of backlash from that. How do we protect that, brother Michael? Well, you, you changed the, you changed the game on it. You changed the playing field. Um, when, uh, in 2015, I think it was when you had the, uh, Indiana religious freedom bathroom bill, the religious freedom bill in, in Indiana, 2015, and the state legislature passed this bill. It was ostensibly called the transgender bathroom bill, right? right. What happened? Uh, corporations spoke out and spoke out in a strong way. And they and, and they denounced what took place in Indiana. Uh, some corporations threatened to stop projects that they had going on in the state of Indiana. You had uh, conferences that threatened to cancel. There was one conference that did cancel. You had the CEO of, um, uh, of Apple uh, of Apple speaking out. You had Angie Liz, the NCAA, all of this. Where are the white corporations that we spend billions of dollars with on an annual basis? Where are they? Why do they have uh, amne amnesia and laryngitis when these two African-Americans were expelled? I haven't heard any corporations denounce what happened. I haven't heard any corporations say that if you continue to to uh, silence their voice, if you continue to do this, we're going to shut down plants or we're going to withdraw projects or anything like this. So what well, we have to African-Americans have to send a clear message to these corporations that if you stand up for LGBTQ, then you need to stand up for BLACK, because if you don't, then that means we're going to target you with a targeted sustained economic withdrawal strategy. See, everybody likes to talk about and love Dr. King, but Dr. King, April 3rd, 1968, in Memphis, Tennessee, he said that we have to always anchor our external direct action with the power of economic withdrawal, which means when you have mass protests, you also have to have targeted sustained economic withdrawal strategy targeted at your opponent to weaken them. OK. And he told them he told them in Memphis, he said, go out and tell your friends and family to boycott Coca-Cola, Wonder Bread, Hearts Bread and, Sil and Hearts Bread and Seal Test Milk because of uh, because of their discriminatory hiring practices. Now, I haven't heard any of the big three civil rights organizations call for economic boycotts of anything in Tennessee. They may call for a travel advisory. So right. we have to have a third force. We have to have a third force of black led organizations that are not beholden to white corporations for donations to be able to push this economic agenda, this economic withdrawal strategy. Um, and then the and then the other thing is we have to learn how to fight differently. So uh, when the uh, Sandy Hook shooting took place in 2012. California teachers and California has like the largest teachers union in the country. California teachers started doing research and they found out that their pension funds were partly invested in three gun manufacturers. One of those gun manufacturers made the Bushmaster AR-15 that was used in the Sandy Hook shooting. So what did they do? They withdrew millions of dollars of their pension fund dollars from these three gun manufacturers. See, we don't we don't understand oftentimes we're financing our own dehumanization. OK, so so when we talk about redistributing the pain through targeted sustained economic withdrawal strategies, it's not just an economic boycott. It's not just standing in front of a, a white owned business blocking the door entrance. No. Look at where your pension fund dollars are invested. Contact your benefits manager tomorrow. Look at where your 401k dollars are invested. A lot of people are invested in privatized prisons through pension funds and 401k dollars and don't know this and financing our own dehumanization. So we have to learn how to fight to win, not fight to fight a good fight or or this, this deals with voting. Also, we have to vote strategically and understand one whose policies are most beneficial for African-Americans, whose policies would do the least amount of harm, whose policies are most realistic, who can create an environment for us to push our agenda the farthest and get the most accomplished. And most importantly, you have to identify those who have an anti-black agenda because an anti-black agenda is worse than not having a black agenda. We have to make sure we vote them out of office and make sure people with an anti-black agenda don't get elected into office. That's a, that's a word right there. Let's go to the, uh, man, you listen to my brother, brother Michael and Hotep. Let's go to our crew, culture crew. I want to hear what you got to say. Um, Thomas Clayton Powell, you checked in and said, look, let's be clear. They were ejected for breaking the rules of the floor. These two Justins are legislatures now. They need to let that activist mentality go. They're playing a grown man's game. They they are grown men, and you had right. these grown you had white grown men acting like children because they didn't want to let them speak. 
Okay, so if they if, if they broke if they broke House floor rules, you don't have to expel them for that because there have been white Republicans who did a lot worse and did not get expelled in, in Tennessee. So you don't have to expel them for this. For that, they represent each one of them represents 70,000 people. You're going to disenfranchise 70,000 people because they're trying to speak up and, 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 and they were trying to uh, speak for. People who are protesting wanting common sense gun laws to keep right. people from being shot and killed. Okay, right. so so you may say, and well, look, they spoke out of turn, but that doesn't mean that you expel them. And if you go study the backstory, there have been other things that have happened to them leading up to this incident, leading up to the protest. Their badges being de deactivated, uh, their mics being cut off, the way that they're talked to. You had uh, punk ass Andrew Farmer who uh, uh, said to uh, 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 Justin uh, Pearson, uh, basically, you did this to get attention, okay? And uh, he was talking to him. He said, he said that he was throwing a temper tantrum. Children throw temper tantrums. He's basically calling him boy. This is what he's doing in a former Confederate state, okay? Instead of saying, how can we put together common sense gun laws to make sure no more white children get their heads blown off, Instead of saying something like that, they wanted to persecute the people who are trying to call attention to the carnage. OK, so we have to redistribute the pain at the ballot box and vote these white supremacists out of office. No, I totally agree, bro. I totally agree. But here's the big thing that I, I think is very interesting. Is it being a political leader, an advocate, an activist? Shouldn't you want your political leader to stand on the side of right? Thomas, I, I have to disagree with you. They didn't a know, absolutely. Why, you shouldn't let go of your activist mentality. Absolutely. Unless you see, see, I guess the person that made that uh, comment it, it want, wants uh, uh, act, uh, want, wants politicians controlled by the lobbyists and the gun lobby, things like this. There are four gun manufacturers in Tennessee. OK, everybody, everybody runs on platforms. Everybody right. runs on policy positions. OK, and these are policy positions that oftentimes come from their own constituents. So you need people who are who are activists. They're speaking for the people they represent. You want them to speak for the lobbyists and the special interests and ignore the needs and concerns of those who, who voted for them. The 70,000 that they represent there in their district. That's idiotic. That's facts. That is facts. Uh, let's take a couple of other uh, comments from our crew. Uh, official Seneca, you said they acted like privileged white men with power and tried to muzzle those brothers. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Ab absolutely. And, and keep in mind, Memphis, Tennessee is where Ida B. Wells was ran out of in 1892 uh, after the Moss store murders where Tom Moss and, and two of his friends were uh, were killed. They uh, they owned a grocery store. Uh, and, you know, uh, Ida B. Wells wrote about the killing. She wrote about the lynchings that were taking place. Her uh, newspaper office was ransacked and she ended up having to leave Tennessee to save her life. Um, Tennessee is where Nathan Bedford Force is from, the first Grand Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan, who became Grand Wizard in 1867, for, former general in the uh, for, for um, the Confederate States of America, for, former general uh, in the, uh, the U.S. Civil War. And he led the Fort Pillow Massacre of 1864, where you had uh, at least 200 African-American Union soldiers who were killed after they surrendered, many of them shot in the head. This was it was Nathan Bedford Forrest who who uh, who was the leader of that Confederate army. Now, his bust, the bust of his head stood at the Tennessee State Capitol building up until for, for decades, up until July of 2021. That's when it was finally removed because of protests. And you had some of these same white Republicans who voted to politically lynch these brothers. You had them defending Nathan Bedford Forrest, who's a traitor to the union. They defended his bus being there. So you, you, you have to study the history of, of Tennessee. Former Confederate state committed treason against the Union, took up arms to maintain slavery. And, and it was in 1881 that the Tennessee state legislature imposed segregation laws when it came to public transportation and streetcars, th things of this nature. OK, so what you saw uh, last week is a continuation of what's been happening in Tennessee post Reconstruction. Absolutely. We got to take a quick pause. When we come forward, folks, uh, we're going to switch gears as we talk about the situation with spanking. 
Um, it's an interesting conversation as we're talking about normalizing corporal punishment. Is it wrong to spank? We'll have that conversation with my brother and, of course, with you. Stay with us. It's the culture here on the Black Star Network. Brother Michael, we got like a, a minute left. Talk to us about the work you're doing. Okay, visit our website, theafricanhistorynetwork.com, theafricanhistorynetwork.com. Register for the online history classes I teach on Saturdays. Ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa understand the transatlantic mm -hmm. slave trade, where they didn't teach you in school, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, theafricanhistorynetwork.com. We deal with thousands of years of history and what leads up to the transatlantic slave trade taking place. You don't have to be present in the class. Uh, we do the sessions live. All the sessions are archived and recorded. Uh, the classes on sale $60, regularly $130. Then Sundays, I teach black resistance movements from the Haitian Revolution, U.S. Civil War, Civil Rights Movement, and Black Power Movement. We look at history chronologically, 1800 to 1968, to understand how we got to where we are today uh, and the laws and policies put in place to bring us to where we are today to understand where we need to go from here. So visit our website, theafricanhistorynetwork.com. We also have a bundle pack of both classes as well on sale for only $100. Awesome. My brother, my brother. Thank my you, brother. brother. Thank you. Thank you. Because that helps support the research and finance the African History Network. Thank you. There it is right there. Brother Michael and Hotep of the African History Network. All right. All right. How's everybody doing today? Hotep, hey, this is Michael M. Hotep, founder of the African History Network, host of the African History Network show. I'm a talk show host, researcher, lecture writer, and historian. So today is Tuesday, April 11th, uh, 2023, and we are live. So I did for Raji Muhammad's show uh, today, The Culture on the Black Star uh, Network, Roland Martin's Network. So some of you all saw uh, that broadcast, and one of the topics we discussed was um, the uh, two African-American uh, lawmakers' 